you know, and one of the things that the internet gifted me is this vast library of ways of thinking. I don't know how old people are in the room, and you don't have to share, but, you know, I'm 40. So when I was in college, we did not have internet access. My last year, you could get an email address if you wanted, but, you know, browsing the web, that came after college for me. When I was just in college and after college, if I wanted to learn about, you know, Buckminster Fuller ideas or weird uh, occult things or Eastern philosophy, I had to really make an effort. I had to go to like an occult bookstore or there were these Lumpanics catalogs where you could order from, but if you ordered from them, you got put on a government list of like freaky shit. And so to go from that huge chasm of challenge to discover ideas that are outside of your status quo to being able to just go, huh, Krishnamurti, what's that? Oh, oh, wow, you know? You can actually watch videos of great masters. And that shift of making a global repository of the wisdom of history, it's like the Alexander in, you know, library times 10 with video is amazing. Because socialization shows you that there are lanes of a freeway of life. And the internet shows, oh, no, 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 it's not a freeway. It's a dry lake bed. Go wherever you want. Um, bye, Brand Delicious. Enjoy yoga. Um, and so that, just that, the, the presence of all of that information allows people to do a few things. One, to find what resonates. And when it resonates, oh, two, the nature of culture is to is to shun you and roll their eyes at you if you if you think something different or weird. But when you have this, the the internet population to go, you can you can say you know what I'm starting to think that you know maybe reincarnation is for real, and your neighbors might go oh my god ugh, and you get embarrassed. But you go online, and you find whole communities of people that will talk about it. Maybe you realize that there's whole nations and populations of people that agree with you which is such a different experience than having to be, have the courage to face your physical world with beliefs that don't jive with theirs. It's massive. So, like you said, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Um, let's see, Danny asked um, how the Burning Man video is coming. That's a good question. Uh, Jake has actually been working on it quite a bit. I gave him, he he's, We've been working, we worked in tandem on some parts, and then he said, I've got some ideas, you know, do you trust me? And I said, I trust you. So he's working on an edit right now. Um, we'll see. I'm, I'm very excited. No, Jake is editing it. Jake is way more talented than me at editing. So I'm, you know, I kind of, I kind of help, like, he'll put together a rough cut. Well, we already have a rough cut based on my notes and my script, and then he showed me it to me. He goes... What do you think? I think it needs a lot of tightening. And I was like, yes. Keeping in mind that he edits shows, you know, all week long, every week. I've edited, you know, shows uh, three times. How long? I don't know. Probably be, it could be like a 25 minute show, like something that actually could be played on PBS or something. How long is it? <laughs> oh, oh yeah, that's what, sorry, is that what you're implying? It was cold outside. It's not my fault. Um, oh, silly, silly. It's 6.30. Oh, my gosh. I must have been talking fast. So, um, and Brandy's gone, so now I can talk to you about her. So, Brandy is so adorable and awesome. She made me um, dinner last night, and then she gave me this note um, right before we ate. You can see that. Let's see if I can make it so you can read it. I don't know if that'll work. <laughs> um, 